people will be able to come back and access it at a later date, especially if they haven't been able to meet um, make this meeting time today, which is great. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support. Just the feedback we've had so far about doing these calls has been really heartwarming. I want to start by uh, introducing my fellow IT process admin fangirl, Jess Dodson. Jess, say hi to the people. Good afternoon, everybody. It's so amazing to see so many of you have joined. So, um, yeah, and thank you so much, Jess, too, for your support. And I also want to do a bit of a shout out to Kathy Moyer, who we have on the call today. She's one of our program managers over in Microsoft and Corp in Redmond. And Kathy was kind of the inspiration. She started up an initiative for these calls in the USA. And we talked about how we could make this happen in different time zones. Um, as well as that, we've had tremendous support from the women and men within Microsoft Australia about bringing this call to life here in our time zone as well. So thank you to everybody for your support so far. Um, let's get stuck in. So why did we decide to start these calls? <laughs> that was a very good question. We saw what Kathy was doing and we really <laughs> wanted to do something like that here. Um, but it's also... We needed a tribe here. Yeah. Yeah, we certainly did. And look, it becomes really apparent, apparent when you start looking at events or meetup groups or just organisations in general where technical communities are gathering that it seems to be easier to find coding communities or people that want to talk about software development and different languages and, and agile and all these other things that really don't mean much to me as an IT pro with and a sysadmin background. And we know that there are amazing women across tech that do great work, whether or not you are doing technical things with infrastructure, whether you're a technical writer, a tester, a product marketing manager, the list really is endless in terms of all the other roles in tech that don't involve application development. We know that people are out there. It's just a little bit harder to find each other and to connect with each other. So hopefully these calls will be a little bit of a catalyst to that. And that's what we'd like to see. We'd like to see people who are in the infrastructure and and the system administrators and the technical writers come out of the woodwork to showcase the roles that they do and to show particularly the younger girls coming up that it's cool to be in tech and you don't have to be a coder. Absolutely. Um, I know that we're a bit passionate about that as, as mums. I have two daughters who both do extension STEM subjects at school. And I look, I love seeing the coding and the robotics and all of that kind of stuff they do as well. But it's great to see uh, role models across our industry so that women who aren't as excited about the prospect of doing that kind of work see that the IT industry is a lot broader than that. And there is a space for them with different skills as well. I just want to make sure that everybody's aware that even though both Jess and I do work for Microsoft and we are being strongly supported by our organisation to do this, these aren't going to be Microsoft calls. We really do want to encourage to reach out to broader technical communities, no matter which cloud or which you know systems or hardware or whatever it is that you're doing what. We are completely systems agnostic. <laughs> we are. There is no religious bias when it comes to the systems you support. If you're a Nix admin, we will support you wholeheartedly. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and you know, as we get into some of the technical topics, we may lean more towards being able to create events like Jess and I that are related to the technologies that we work with. But we certainly want to open the community to say, if there's something that you want to run or talk about and it's not in our particular area of expertise um, or under our Microsoft banner, then let's talk about how we can support that as well. Um, so just on that, we're also interested in covering both a mix of topics, whether it's talking about what it's like having a career in this kind of a role in tech, or whether or not we start to delve into some either fundamental or deep technical dives into some of the technologies that you want to learn about as well. Um, I suggested on the call for people who joined early to drop a note into the chat and introduce yourselves. If you haven't already and you feel comfortable, we'd love to hear 
what your role is in tech or maybe what city you're based in, just so that we can start uh, finding like-minded people who do similar work that we do or might be in the same city that, that we're in. This is completely optional, but it's kind of nice to, to get to know each other and to be able to, to start making those personal connections. And on that note, Jess, you can start and kick us off by telling the people a little bit about what your current role is and maybe how you got started in tech. So my current role, I am a premier field engineer or op switch in um, security and identity. So I primarily focus in things like Azure ATP and ATA, um, Azure Active Directory. I do a lot of on-prem Active Directory work. Um, for those of you who know me, you will have seen me ranting about Active Directory and securing it online quite a bit. So I've been in IT for about 15 years now. I'm only very fresh to Microsoft. I'm currently in my ninth week of my role and absolutely loving it. But I first got started by watching my dad. So my dad was a systems engineer and that's how I started in tech. So watching him do what he did um, and I really loved looking at what it was he was doing. I enjoyed playing with computers, studied computers at, at school, didn't get the OP I wanted, went off to TAFE. Uh, and then I got a job at 19 and started as a help desk weenie, uh, doing just your basic user work, adding users to groups, uh, fixing printers, that kind of stuff. And from there, I worked my way up to where I am now. So 15 years later, I am now a PFE at Microsoft. Fantastic. That's great to hear. And we're so glad to help you with our organization, Jess. It's, um, it's wonderful to see you here. Um, I have just celebrated my first 12 months at Microsoft, which has gone super fast. Everyone give a huge shout out to Sonia. <laughs> a year is a massive milestone here. It's so exciting. It's been crazy. Um, look, I when I started to get into tech and, and do Microsoft-y things, the thought of actually joining this organization one day with a blue badge was you know, just one of those pie in the sky things you think might happen one day. So I am still pinching myself. Every time I walk into the building and my badge actually lets me in, I, I do pinch myself. But I was never going to be in IT. I was going to be a flight attendant or a tour guide. <laughs> so how did you end up getting into tech? How did you fall into it, obviously? So I ended up deciding that it was much better to go and work for a year and get some money straight after high school than it was to go to university or TAFE and study. And I got working for a large organisation, a bank, who had problems with their PCs and recognised that I knew my way around a DOS command. And they actually reached out and they said to me, would you be interested in joining the IT department? We will train you on the job. So I have owe my IT career to a large organisation that saw a spark of potential in an 18-year-old and d decided to train her and move her to the IT department. And yeah, the, the rest, as they say, was, as they say, was history. Um, I've worked my way up from doing very large enterprise stuff to leaving the corporate world and running a small managed services provider with my husband. And I see we've got another MSP on the call. So <laughs> it's lovely to see people from, from my part of the, the world and that try the, the small business MSP market is what I've been living and breathing for the last 14 years after some very big corporate and government roles. Um, and so now I find myself as a cloud advocate with Microsoft and my cloud advocate role, I'm thrilled to say, has an IT pro in it, a sysadmin focus, where we advocate for people who are putting workloads in the cloud and managing them. So doing IT ops, whether or not you've moved all of your virtual machines into the cloud, whether or not you're running yeah. stuff hybrid in the cloud or on-prem, or whether or not you're still tinkering around with upgrading Windows servers that you've got on-premises. So we get to talk to those technical communities and help create new resources to make it easier for you to do the things you need to do and take feedback straight to the product teams. I actually report through to our Azure engineering department. Um, so that, yeah, that's that's the role that I do remotely from Brisbane with a, a boss who is in Redmond in our head office. It's a seriously exciting day. It's a seriously exciting job. You have a very cool role. 
it is it is a lot of fun. And just having a read of the chat, it looks like you are not alone in falling into IT. We've got some people here that are going to be an optometrist, going to be in the police force, going to be in the military, going to be a vet. So it looks like a lot of you kind of fell into IT, which is amazing to see. It's it's interesting to note the number of different paths that people have taken to get into technology. So it can really happen to anyone. So I think that's one of the reasons why we wanted to start these calls, particularly for women, because while you may start out when you're younger um, saying, this is what I want to be when you grow up, or you don't even know what you're going to be when you grow up. Thank you for that, Paula. Um, if you don't know what you're going to be, that, that there, will, there will be a role for you here in tech. Yeah, and look, we probably need to do a whole session just on this. Um, my parents bought an Amstrad CPC 6128 when I was a teenager, and I used to type in the little DOS commands to run some basic programs. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just typing them in from the book. But we were kind of the generation of maybe buying bits and pieces of hardware and putting together a PC. My parents were never really into, into tech or IT at all. Um, they still really aren't. But it's interesting to see the generation that we've got coming through now that might be growing up with Apple devices or iPads and tablets and don't tend to tinker with sort of the PC hardware like we had to do if we wanted to put together, say, a gaming PC. It was it was the rule in our household that if you wanted to build a machine, there had to be a blood sacrifice given to that PC. That's the way it had to go. And you don't get that nowadays. Your machines, they arrive in a box, you set them up and away you go. There's no building your own machines anymore. Yeah. And everything's tablets as well. So everything's touch screens. You get small devices like the surfaces or iPads or whatever. And the kids these days, they're learning a lot younger than we were. Yeah. My two-year-old can use a phone. Yep, absolutely. No, it's um, it's really interesting. And I'd, I'd love to hear more about these stories from women who never intended to be in tech, who never dreamed of going into IT and what sort of veered you off into that direction from uh, from what you had your heart set on as a kid maybe or how you how you fell into these roles and and then what made you stay because we know that we've got some amazing statistics about not only the pipeline of women coming into the industry but our retention rates Absolutely. and how many people leave the industry or may take a big break like maternity leave and then might struggle to come back in and re-enter the industry after a period of being away just because of how fast our industry changes and coming from that perspective, I can say, because I've just been back now 12 months from coming back from maternity leave. So I've now been back 12 months. And that 12 months, so much changed in that 12 months. The the technology changes and even the leaps that were made in my organisation at the time, I worked for a government organisation. And while government may not move fast, there's still a lot that changes in 12 months. So it's amazing how much you can feel you've missed out on in that amount of time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there is so much scope of what we could cover in these calls. So I want to give you a little bit of a teaser into some suggestions that we've been brainstorming here with a few people about what we might include on these upcoming calls each month. So I'm proud to announce that in August, our August call, we have Colleen Maguire, who's one of our technical sales managers here at Microsoft Australia. She's going to talk about maximizing your leadership potential. And when I saw this as a topic, it's been a really interesting conversation with Colleen and I about the difference between leadership and management. And I've heard stories about women who get to a certain level in their technical roles and get tapped on the shoulder to see if they would be interested in being a team leader or interested in management training, interested in having direct reports underneath them. And while that's certainly a valid career path and very similar to the one I took, it's not for everybody. Just because we get into a role in tech and we love the technology that we play with and those skills we develop, we don't necessarily all want to go and be people managers. And so that's going to be a very important part of Colleen's call next month, is talking about how you can lead from a technical perspective as well. It looks like it's going to be a really exciting talk. So coming from the background of being and living and breathing tech, I know that management was always something that was floated to me and I didn't want to manage. I wanted to to stay technical, to stick with the nitty gritty, to to work with the tools and play with the tools. So having having a, a call and having a talk with someone who, who wants to show us how to be leaders in our field without stepping away from the tools, I think is is going to be something really amazing. Yeah, absolutely. 
We're uh, looking at locking in a date for a talk about public speaking. So how do you get started with public speaking? Why would you think about doing it? Are there any sort of benefits to your career? And how we can ease new speakers in as well. So Vanessa Love, who is the Director of DevOps with the Australian Bureau of Statistics, she's actually speaking on this topic at Hopper Down Under. So that's an event happening next week that I will speak more about before the end of this call. And she's got an amazing record of working with women in tech who would be interested in sharing their experiences and their stories with people, um, but are a little bit nervous about taking that first step to, to be on a stage or to be talking in front of a group of people about what they know and what they've learned. So I look, I know, um, Public speaking is not for everybody. I don't want people to think that if they're going to have a great career in tech that they have to be the sort of person that gets up and does that. But for the people who might be interested or might be a little bit shy and think they could give it a go with sort of some help and mentoring, I know Vanessa has got some amazing tips and advice for people who want to try it out. And it's surprising that once you've done it once, you do get bitten by the bug. You do want to do it more if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, uh, particularly if you're keen on sharing information, helping teach others, which I know a lot of a lot of women really are. We want to share our information. So getting started with with speaking and speaking comfortably and doing technical speaking, which is probably the most important part. I think most of us don't want to get pigeonholed as the female speaker or the diversity speaker. We want to be speaking on that stuff, but we also want to be speaking on the, the technical aspects that we're passionate about. So I'm actually really looking forward to that one. Even though I've done public speaking, I want to know how to be able to do it better. Yeah, absolutely. And so some uh, other topics, including working and parenting. So what it's like juggling work and being a parent at the same time. If you are a sole parent, if you have a partner, you know, if you've got younger kids, older kids, all of that. And I kind of really want to encourage that to be a broader conversation because I understand that a lot of the benefits that we put out that may be marketed as benefits for women in the workplace are already really good, always really good for our dads as well, because we know that dads want to be just as much at, at the school assemblies or, you know, doing the things that they can with their families too. So I think that working and parenting is going to be a really exciting topic. I confess to Jess that just before this call, I had one of those moments <laughs> where I missed a call from school saying that my 13 year old is in sick bay and needs to be picked up. So fortunately, my backup plan today is a call to my husband who can go and do that. But there, there you go. That's what it, that's what life is like being a working parent and having to juggle responsibilities like random phone calls from school. Yeah, um, burnout and mental health, that's a topic that I've spoken about a fair bit. So I'll share my story a little bit about what I've been through and we'll just open up that conversation in general. Um, I think it's really important that we talk about this more as an industry because being in IT has some very sort of specific drivers um, that can affect us in terms of how passionate we are about our work and how responsive we need to be when things go wrong. And that sort of cumulative effect over a longer period of time when you're constantly doing roles like that can uh, have a very negative effect if we're not conscious of it. Um, and Olena, the talking about mental health, most definitely in regards to neurodiversity. So I was on a panel uh, at Ignite, the tour earlier this year, talking about neurodiversity uh, in the tech field. And it hasn't been announced yet, but will be soon. Um, I'm, I should be helping out with the panel uh, that Donna Saka is going to be running over at Ignite in Florida later this year. So it will definitely be around neurodiversity and being different and how that's not necessarily a bad thing. Your mental health is important and we need to look after it, but being neurodiverse is not a bad thing and it can often be an asset to you in this industry. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that, Jess. 
Um, so some other sessions that we've talked about, um, we, we talked a little bit earlier about becoming an IT pro and generating, uh, nurturing the next generation of our non-coders. So that, that'll be a very important sort of career. And we're not denigrating the coders. We need you. We love you. But we just can't be you because I don't know about you, but when I do scripting or coding, I tend to break keyboards. How do you go with that? <laughs> I, I, I tell people I could not code my way out of a paper bag unless it was PowerShell enabled. Okay. And even then, I'd probably be copying and pasting somebody else's scripts. But <sighs> we'll get there. But on that, though, um, actually looking at an IT pro version or, or view of coding. So things like GitHub, automation, infrastructure as code, DevOps, and working with developers, all of those sort of touch points where we need sort of some level of scripting skills, if you like, but how that fits into our world, what's relevant in context of the work we do. And I've seen that more and more with things like GitHub. So <laughs> one of my earlier experiences with GitHub was a developer turning around and saying to me, oh, you just go and fork the repo. <laughs> What? It sounds like something you should be doing in private. Look, it's a completely <laughs> it's a completely different language to me, to be perfectly honest. But what I'm finding is that the more that the tasks that I do with things like Office 365 or Azure are um, based on PowerShell or based on templates, a lot of that that code for doing things at scale or doing things based on templates is in GitHub done it and so as an IT pro I've kind of gone I think I really need to learn this thing and now I'm proud to say I actually have a script and a repo in GitHub I still have no idea what I'm doing but I'm learning and so we, we we have the whole opportunity to do a big discussion in there about what does that look like for us what are the skills that we could learn that help make our jobs easier and that's the thing as IT pros we interact with our devs and developers and we kind of need to know how to speak their language, even if we don't know how to do their job. And let's face it, we will never know how to do their job. At least be able to talk their language and understand what it is they're trying to tell us and what they want us to be able to do. And we may need to delve into their world occasionally by going into GitHub. Um, Sonia and I were actually talking about this earlier this morning. I had to jump on GitHub and do a, a fork and a pull request for updating some doco in docs.microsoft.com. So learning how to do those things and understanding how to do those things even if it's not something you do every day at least understanding it is good jeff has said github makes my head hurt i'm glad it's not just me <laughs> and, and alina you you better don't you dare feel bad about being able to code we're glad that you're on our call and you might be able to help teach the rest of us absolutely more. don't feel bad we need you to do it because we certainly can't <laughs> Fantastic. And just on that, you know, if there are, you know, we haven't had some particular Microsoft focus sessions that might be good to run as separate calls. For example, our docs platform. So at docs.microsoft.com, it is an open platform for anybody to be able to comment and edit and improve technical documentation. And I don't know about you, but the number of times that I've gone in and I've read something and I've tried the steps and there, there may be a little detail missing or something that's not explained particularly well, it's a great open source system for you to actually be able to get in there and um, edit some stuff and suggest some changes. Who have we got? Okay, uh, I think that, that muted that random microphone, so um, I hope you can all still hear me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if everybody could just make sure that their mics are muted, that'd be great. I think that might do it, though. Um, I, so do yes. like, I do like Yolani's comment in regards to intersectionality as well. Um, it would certainly be good. I mean, while this is a women in tech um, call, there will definitely be intersectionality. So there will be people of colour, there will be those living with a disability, and that may be a visible disability or not a visible disability. Um, I can speak from having a, a very <laughs> virulent form of rheumatoid arthritis and how that can affect me and affect my job. You may not realise it by looking at me, but it's a bit crap. So for people in my kind of position who have to live with those kind of diseases that are lifelong, it'd be good to have a, a chat about how they cope with things in their life. So if there's people on the chat who are are in a situation like that and, and want to be involved in something like that, it would be great to get your input on something like that that I'd be able to run. 
Thanks, Sim. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great stuff. Um, so on that, is there anything else that you want to see? It's great to see a few people all automatically just popping in some suggestions in the chat. Bring, bring it on. We want to hear more. Um, we have a gap in October at the moment. Is there anything particularly on your heart right now that you think should be a priority for us and what we've talked about? Is there something that we've missed that you'd be interested in seeing adding to the schedule? Or maybe do you want to volunteer? These calls are all remote, so it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. If you can make the time scheduled to come in, if there's something that you're passionate about, uh, you're more than welcome to, to come on board and, and claim a month and a, and a topic and, and come and talk to some people. So please let us know either in the chat. Before we wrap up the call, um, I will plug the link to our tech community space where we can carry on the conversation there in the meantime as well. I love the idea from Paula about imposter syndrome as well because <laughs> it's something that comes up a lot for women. I've seen a number of talks on it. Um, I think you've given one, haven't you? Yeah, um, I've done a lightning talk on imposter syndrome. I reckon that would be a perfect one to give on one of these calls. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no, it would, it would certainly be good to... Add to the schedule. Fantastic. Yep. Good stuff. Okay. Um, I'm now just going to talk about a few sort of in-person events that we've got coming up. And as I mentioned at the start of this call, it seems to be a lot easier to find big conferences in the Asia Pacific region or even local meetup groups that are aimed at software developers or coding communities. There's things like NDC and DDD and lots of other three-letter acronyms that software developers understand because it, it's sort of their community. It's a little bit harder to find where people are connecting in person for our sort of events. Next week here in Brisbane on the 30th and the 31st of July, we actually have our very first Hopper Down Under. Now, I'm super excited about this because not only is it in my own city, I can go and sleep in my own bed at the end of the day, which is great, but there is a huge amount of buzz in the USA about the main Grace Hopper Conference. It sells out their registration super quickly every year. There have been a huge number of uh, people who have been uh, sad and upset that they missed out on getting tickets to Grace Hopper and their conference this year. And it's something um, that really does seem to be an incredible event. So the Anita B Org are launching uh, an Australian version called Hopper Down Under. This is the first every year that they've done this with some of the, the topics and suggestions from the main conference. And I'm attending that next week in Brisbane. So if anybody else is attending Hopper Down Under in Brisbane next week, um, ping me, let me know. I will be around. I will be uh, promoting on social media that I'm there if anybody wants to connect in person grab a coffee uh, sit together in the conference sessions because it's always weird when you go into a conference by yourself and you don't know anybody else who's going as well so so Alison you've said you're a little confused about the conference in regards to that what what about the conference is is it you're not sure what's what what the aim is for it or you're not sure who it's aimed at? Yeah, so Hopper down under, the Grace Hopper conferences don't really have a profile down here in Australia at all. And as I said, it's mainly through my US connections that I actually made the connection. I haven't seen it promoted very heavily either. So um, I'm looking forward to coming back with a report and, and letting you know sort of what it was and what the audience was and, and how that went down as well. Um, Microsoft Ignite is Microsoft's Australia, uh, Microsoft big conference in Orlando on the 4th to the 8th of November. So this has a lot of sort of IT pro and sysadmin focused sessions across all of our different Microsoft products. Uh, we also have an amazing um, diversity and inclusion stream that is running again for the second time this year that I know that Jess will be speaking at and I'll be involved in too. So again, if anybody is doing the big flights. It is a very long Orlando, flight home to Orlando, yes. Jess and I will be there and we will be giving you an update on the November call on what we learned, what happened at that conference, um, links to the session recordings and we'll, we'll give you a big update on how that went for the people who aren't able to make it.
really looking forward to that one. And to give you a heads up as well, if any of you have seen it, um, if you do follow me, I will actually be giving an updated and longer version of my uh, women's stories from the Tech Trenches talk while I'm in Orlando and letting all of the US hear my frustration and anger. So um, in regards to that one, if there are any more stories you would like me to add to that talk about uh, things that you've experienced in the industry that you don't agree with, things that have happened to you that have made you question whether you're in the right industry, um, feel free to hit me up um, and either shoot them through to me on Twitter or in a DM or email me. We'll give you the contact details at the end of this call because I would definitely love to get some more stories from from women in regards to that. Yeah, good stuff. Um, the I've also been approached by an organisation called the ITAM Review. They're putting on an IT asset management conference called Wisdom Australia 2019. That's happening in Melbourne on the 20th and the 21st of November. And they kind of reached out to see what they could do in the space in their conference in terms of connecting women who are um, in the IT industry in these other roles, especially related to uh, IT asset management, which sometimes in a role is a role in itself and sometimes can be done by people doing other IT infrastructure sort of type roles within the IT department as well. So that's on the schedule if you're in Melbourne in November and, and that's kind of your thing. They are very supportive and I'm trying to see if I can uh, line up some other work to maybe go down and, and join that conference as well. In Sydney next year, the 13th and 14th of February, we have Microsoft Ignite the Tour. So Microsoft Ignite the Tour is a mini touring version of our big Microsoft Ignite Orlando event. Um, it's coming back again to Sydney. I'm going to strangle the person who made the ongoing booking for the 14th of February at the convention centre. But unfortunately, with large events, this is kind of just the way it rolls. When you have a date slot and a venue that you can get, you you hold on to it. It's like, you know, the, the Easter or the Christmas camping booking that you just need to lock in year after year after year. And uh, I've actually done a Microsoft Tech Ed on Valentine's Day, walking the halls, holding hands with my husband. Um, it was very romantic. If I can tell you, so. Ah, that is a good one as well. <laughs> so there is Linux Conf AU, the call for sessions and mini comps. It's open until the July the twenty eighth. Um, I, I've seen that one promoted a fair bit on Twitter. Um, it looks like it's going to be a really good conference this year. Um, so I'll try and find the dates for that one as well. Fantastic. And thank you so much, Alison, for popping that into the chat. As I said, I, I am aware that I have a very Microsoft-centric view of events that are happening in our space. So absolutely love people to chime in. Tell us what else is going on in the world that you know about in terms of events, whether you pop them here in the chat or tell us on Tech Community after the call. So thank you for that, Alison. Yes, so Linux Conf AU 2020 is on from the 13th to the 17th of January on the Gold Coast, which is where we should totally be. <laughs> yeah, the Gold Coast in, in January, like it's... um. It's one of those things, though, you, you get all these people kind of complaining about the heat because they're not used to being in Queensland, and then you go into the conference rooms and you freeze. Um, with Ignite the Tour, I've been doing some global events all around the world, and you're like, what do I pack to go from this city to this city? And you know what? Conference rooms are just universally cold. Freezing cold. <laughs> no matter where you Freezing go. Cold. <laughs> Fantastic. That's all we've got on the upcoming event schedule. Like I said, let us know if there's anything else in the world that you're aware of and we'll get those promoted as well. And that's something to say, like while we are very Microsoft focused because that's the world that we come from, we don't want it to be Microsoft centric. So we've done the plug for Linux Conf AU. If there are others that are available that are going on in your area, please shout them out, let us know. We'd love to see some more IT Pro events that are happening. I knew of a couple of security events that happened earlier this year. We had B-Sides and CrikeyCon. There was OzCert. So we're, we're, more, we're more than likely going to be calling those out next year when we put these calls together because security ops is, is still operations and we're still open for, for IT sec ops as well. So... And great. Look, it's lovely to see those events coming through in the chat. Yes, DDD Melbourne, Digital Workplace Conference in Sydney, AWS Public Sector Summit in Canberra, DDD Brisbane. I know that uh, you know the DDD people have been doing some amazing things with their events. They're always, always great. Hey.
Um, NDC Sydney, I actually should have put a call out. I'm attending that event. And again, it's got a reputation for being, it literally was the Norwegian Developers Conference, but they've expanded their scope a little bit. And um, some of the sessions that they're doing uh, go across topics that are broader, like security from not just a software development aspect. Um, and I'm actually, I think I'm speaking about cost, cloud cost management at that event was one of the topics that I'm speaking on. So it's certainly, it's interesting to, to see some of these topics that sort of go a little bit more, more across, even though they may be primarily application developer communities. Ah, the Summit UG user group in August in Melbourne. Uh, that's really exciting as well. Um, and in regards, Jacinta's comment about DDD. Now, I find that really interesting. So DDD is, the way that they, they put it is it's, a not-for-profit community event run by developers for developers. But at the same time, I've been approached to speak there from an IT pro's point of view and from a DevOps point of view as well. So there is a lot of crossover at the moment between developers and IT pros. We need to understand what the other's doing. So while there are sessions aimed at developers, I know there are sessions aimed at IT pros as well at some of those conferences. So, Yeah, it's hard because on one hand... On one hand, I kind of feel like maybe we need some more solely IT pro focused conference, but it is interesting to see some of the developer conferences are reaching out into more IT pro topics as well, where you know, they're kind of trying to break down the walls a little bit. And I think we do, you know, we, we kind of run this gamut between breaking down walls and labels and all working together versus making sure that we're talking about topics that are relevant to what you do and enable you to spend your time wisely so that you're not at an event that is, you know, 90% of stuff that you don't normally do on a on a day-to-day -day basis and you're not getting any value from. So yeah, it's a tricky one. It is. It's a very hard one to, to balance, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've got a, got a few minutes left. The intent with these calls is that we'll never run them to a full hour. And I've scheduled them at midday on purpose so that you can sit down and listen to some women talking and, and join in the chat while you grab a bite for lunch if you need to do that to fit into your schedule. Obviously, you can grab the recordings later, but if we keep them to the under an hour so that you've, you've got a little bit of free time, that's always a good it's always a good thing. Let's talk a little bit about um, what's currently on your plate. Jess, what are you working on at the moment? So at the moment, I'm focusing on trying to get ramped up. So it's one of the, the terms that's used inside Microsoft is ramping up because I'm a fresh hire. It's trying to get me to the point where I'm actually useful to the organization out there delivering to our customers. So I'm in the process at the moment of learning a hell of a lot around Azure Security Center and Azure Advanced Threat Protection. So they seem to be some, some big security things that are, are very highly sought after at the moment. And I'm trying to cram my brain full of all things Azure security. <laughs> so how does that make you feel though? So obviously you kind of need to prove yourself with any organization through that interview process to be given a chance for them to, to give you a letter of employment. But do you kind of feel like, oh my gosh, I know nothing. Why did you even hire me? Or is it kind of reinforcing some of the stuff that you like, hey, I do know what I'm doing? It's a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B. There are some things that I know a lot about. So there are some things that I'm <coughs> excuse me, that I will be ramping up on around Active Directory, that it's it's a walk in the park. I could do it in my sleep. When it comes to a lot of the Azure Cloud stuff, it's changing so quickly that you have to keep on top of it. You have to keep learning it. So even if I did know it six months ago when I first applied for the job, it's probably changed by now anyway. So, and that's probably the same with any of the cloud offerings. I know that the AWS system, it moves around all the time. So I think it's a bit of a challenge at the moment, particularly with cloud-based stuff that everything that we do changes either day to day, week to week, month to month. So you've got to try and keep on your toes. Yeah. Keep on top of it all. And I think that's really um, why we need a separate topic on this, just keeping up with the pace of change, right? I just I just love the fact that I am 24 years into my tech career and I learned stuff yesterday because it was an area in Azure that I hadn't played with before. It was a feature that was released a couple of months ago. And I just got to sit there and dive into it and, and learn how it hung together. And just that opportunity to always be learning to, to be doing something different is one of the things that I love about our industry. And I do laugh when I come across technologists 
um, that kind of push back against change. I'm like, you are in the wrong industry. But I do also appreciate that coming from that infrastructure background, change means risk. And when you've got risk, you have the opportunity for your systems to fail. And we are all about making sure that our systems are reliable and secure and they're running and we've got that uptime. So anytime you introduce an element of change, you've got a risk of, you know, some serious downtime. So it's that's a hard one to balance. But at the same time, it's one of those things where you want to keep up with the new things. You want to try and play with the new toys, but you want to make sure that what you're running is stable. So it's it's trying to keep all the all, all the balls in the air and make sure that everyone's happy at the same time. And yeah, I agree with you about the technology and, and change. If if you're going to be in this industry, you've got to you've got to be okay with change. I wouldn't necessarily be, be say be comfortable with change, but at least be okay with a little bit of change. Yes, absolutely, that's right. Um, So on my plate, apart from the conference, um, I am working heavily on some content, some public facing content. So as I mentioned, Microsoft Ignite, the tour is coming to Sydney next year. That particular conference is actually going to 30 cities around the world. And I am helping to create some sessions, create some demos, uh, do some presentations for that event, whether they'll be presented by myself or somebody else in one of the other cities. Um, so I'm I'm diving down on things like um, virtual machines inside Azure and how you manage those. I'm also doing some work on our Microsoft identity products and some more fundamental and basic level content on identity and what it means, how it is a very fundamental uh, piece of our security framework to make sure that our cloud resources and our data is secure and some of the cool new stuff that we're doing with passwordless. So our things like our um, our FIDO support for our authentication keys and our Windows Hello facial recognition, all of that kind of stuff so that you never have to remember a password ever again. Ah, uh, it makes me all goosebumpy, the idea of the death of the password. <laughs> password burn. Death to passwords. But yes, yes. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys what you guys are currently working on, if there's, if there's anything amazing that you're working on at the moment. Yep. Carol, yeah, you're right. I need to reach out to Carol and talk to you about identity. So I'm also plotting to create some new content on our new training platform that we have here at Microsoft called Microsoft Learn. So Microsoft Learn, which you can find, I think you can find it at learn.microsoft.com. I guess I should have looked that up. Um, Has free training, interactive modules. We are growing that content library all the time and uh, looking at areas where we've got technologies or topics that we're, we're not covering that we might might reach out to so I I have some identity stuff sketched out to uh, to get built for that platform too and I need to hit Carol up <laughs> to, to get your thoughts on it too look at that power apps and flow yeah that oh. talk about rabbit holes you can do some amazing stuff with power apps and flow without having to to sit there and noodle and code quite so much document management it's amazing to see what you're all what you're all working with in these kind of areas. Oh, look, I've even got a, I've even got a friend in New Zealand. Hello, Suzanne. I'm not going to ask you how your winter is. I'm heading over in September. I'm speaking at Canterbury Tech Summit in September. So I'm, I'm looking forward to coming back home. If bonus points, if you picked up my slight Kiwi accent on the call, I'm actually from Christchurch originally. So I'm, I'm looking forward to coming back, but I'm not looking forward to putting a couple of extra layers on. So it's nice to see that it's actually warm <laughs> over there. Microsoft Azure factory. Oh, that sounds nice. Nice. Oh, look, there you go. Okay. Lots of people. Oh, Christ, you be... Lots of Kiwis. All right. <laughs> it's nice to see. Well, obviously, we've we've set the time just right for Australians and Kiwis alike. So. Yeah, that's all right. So um, I'll be very careful about not talking about sports because <laughs> rugby, netball, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Jeff's probably glaring at me. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. I am going to wrap this call up. Thank you very much. I'm going to encourage you to keep on the conversation. Come and join us at aka.ms forward slash women IT pros. That is a link to our page that explains what we're about. You can hit the user groups navigation link just above it to come and put a new conversation or join on in on what we're talking about. Jess, where can people find you online? I'm about to put it into the chat, but you can find me online 
anywhere you type in girl germs, you're probably going to find me. So um, if you're on Twitter, I'm at girl germs. Um, and I'll also throw my LinkedIn profile in there if you want to hit me up on there, if you're not a fan of Twitter. <laughs> yep. And look, you know, Twitter and LinkedIn are my jam as well. So you can find me at Sonia Cuff on Twitter or just search for me on LinkedIn. I had a, my daughters actually had a thing in their STEM class where they were talking about your online identity and what search results come up if somebody searched for your name and what happens if you put your parents' names into the search results. <laughs> and yeah, that's an interesting experience when your mum has quite a public profile on the interwebs um, just to see how much I come up in search results. But connect with me on LinkedIn. I live on Twitter. Come and say hi if you're on there as well. Um, let's keep the conversation going. Thank you so much for your time and for your support. And we will see you on the fourth Tuesday of August. Fabulous. I look forward to it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.